Good morning. I'm honored to um, be able to introduce a man who really needs no introduction. A policymaker for over 30 years, Mayor Ron Dellums is a veteran congressional leader and standard bearer for many groups and individuals in public life. A Berkeley trained psychiatric social worker, his journey has taken him from his tenure as chairman of the Congressional Committee with Oversight to the U.S. Capital City Government to leading um, California's eighth largest city. Mayor Dellums, career in public service began in 1967 when he was elected to the Berkeley City Council. Shortly thereafter, in 1970, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives where he represented Oakland, Berkeley, and the surrounding areas for 28 years, um, including service as the chair of the House Armed Services Committee. During his time in Congress, Ron was a strong advocate for civil rights and a leader on environmental, labor, and consumer issues. In addition to representing the views of his districts in Congress, Ron was exceptionally effective in bringing home substantial federal funds for the benefit of Oakland. It is my great pleasure to welcome to the, to the stage Oakland's Mayor, Ron Dellums. I'd like to thank you for your very kind and generous introduction to my distinguished colleague, Mr. Mayor. And ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to begin by saying that at a certain point in my career, I had an opportunity to chair the House Armed Services Committee when the military budget was slightly in excess of $300 billion. And the other day when I mentioned that uh, in talking with some of my former colleagues on the Hill, they said, Ron, that dates you. The military budget is a lot larger than $300 billion. But at that point, mastering a $300 billion military budget thousands of weapon systems and numerous policy issues and 55 members of Congress who ran from the far right to the left, that was a walk in the park compared to being a mayor. <laughs> so I come to you this morning with some mixed feelings. One, I'm very pleased to be here with you to engage in this conversation, to be with my friend and colleague, Mayor Newsom. But on the downside, I come here against the backdrop of an extraordinary time in American and world history. Wonderful jokes and hearty laughter this morning notwithstanding, every single one of us in this room know that we are in uncharted waters and in unprecedented territory. We see a continuing march of nations stating publicly that they are now in official recession. Our financial markets had been teetering on the brink of disaster. Our economy on the decline. Our automobile industry crashing. Thousands and thousands of people in this country harmed by mortgage foreclosures. These are the stark realities. And Oakland does not exist in a vacuum. Open, Oakland exists in a state, in a national, and in a global context. In that regard, just a few short months ago, in a mid-cycle adjustment, we had to find and balance the general fund budget 37.4 million dollars. It forced us to lay off workers and shut down the government. And each time the local community is forced by virtue of these deficits to lay off people, shut down work, not spend money, it even sends the economy plundering even lower. We are now in the throes of a two-year budget cycle going forward. Our conservative estimate is that Oakland has a $50 million deficit in the first year, $57 million deficit in the second year, and we still don't know exactly what the state of California is going to do. Those numbers may even go further, which means further layoffs more closures and shutdowns 
pushing the local economy even lower. Those are the realities. So up steps this wonderful new president, President Obama. And he says and understands as we do that in a mixed economy, where, when, why, and under what circumstances the government spends its money can have an enormous impact upon the economy. This is not a private economy. It is a mixed economy. And so people turned to the federal government and said, do something. The president said, yes, let's do something now. Let our focus be to generate jobs, to stimulate economic development, and to grow a workforce capable of handling the opportunities going forward. And let's put as much money as possible to the states and to the local communities. Another assumption that he made, with which I agree, and that is that if the public sector is going to engage in job development, we embrace the idea that you cannot create jobs in a vacuum. Jobs are the byproduct of a society's commitment to solve problems. Therefore, the president said, in addressing and grappling with problems and needs, we will generate employment. If we're going to stimulate the economy, let's engage in problem solving. Let's address the issues of infrastructure, not only repair and modernize the infrastructure that we developed for the last century, but let's begin to think through the infrastructure needs as we go forward into this century. Let's look at the problems of the challenges of greening our cities, education, health care, etc. The B part of it was let's do something about poverty because his people pointed out that if we don't do something about poverty in America in the not too distant future, our poverty numbers will increase by a minimum of 10 million people, which means that the number of people in America living in poverty will exceed 50 million people. So that was another assumption. The third was, he said, let's do something about the cities because we know that the cities are caught in deficits that they're having to lay off people, deal with essential services. Big, big problem. And just going back to Oakland, for example, our general fund budget is $500 million. $350 million of that goes into police and fire, which means we have $150 million left. And we've got to find how to cut $50 million of that remaining $100 million. Incredible challenge. At the end of the day, does that compromise services at the local community? That's part of economic development, but the, because the extent to which we don't have adequate services, it diminishes the economic environment within which we live. How do we balance the budget and not have to go into the police budget, into the public safety budget? These are serious challenges.